All right, so around this time of year coming up, people start to think about, you know, the birth of Christ, Christmas, and everything. And probably the last time you heard about one of the wild items that you can get out there in the world was in preschool days when you heard about the three wise men coming and bringing baby Jesus some, some, some gifts. A couple of those gifts were frankincense and myrrh. The other one, of course, we all know what it was. Now, frankincense and myrrh are the resins or pitches of a tree, a couple different types of trees from over in uh, Oman, Saudi Arabia, Israel, um, places like that, but it all originated somewhere around Oman. Anyway, if you ever want to get any, it comes in little droplets. These are little pieces of pitch that have hardened on the tree after they've, you know, made a little incision in the tree and it's bled. And this is some very aromatic stuff. It's quite nice. The myrrh is the dark stuff. Okay, and the frankincense is the uh, the creamy stuff. Smells pretty nice just like that. Now there's a real trick in burning this uh, properly. If you do it just with a lighter, you, you will not be impressed. It won't really smell that good. So what I've done is I've concocted a little setup here. This is some charcoal from the barbecue out back on some tin foil. And this is a little incense burner, maybe. I just put some tin foil in there. Now, what I'm going to do is get the charcoal going hot, and then I'm just going to put a piece of myrrh right on top, a piece of frankincense, and it's going to start to smoke. Really aromatic, wonderful. At first, you're really going to like the uh, frankincense, just in general. If you're to hold it close to a candle, if it starts to get on fire, blow it out, and that smoke, you know, It'll remind the Catholics of church. Um, the myrrh, though, is really quite impressive. I didn't like it at first. I wasn't happy. I just bought this online, by the way. Um, I got mine from Mountain Rose Herbs. Uh, good source of, of uh, different wild harvested items. I gather spruce, pine, Douglas fir pitch here in Western Canada. And I have yet to try this system with it. Um, but it's it's very woodsy, you know, very Christmas tree like. So anyway, let's let's show you how I do this. Um, we'll go from there. Now, of course, one of the best ways to do this would obviously be to just buy yourself some charcoal tablets. But uh, I haven't got those in the mail yet from the internet. A little frankincense on there first. A little myrrh. And then you'll see it, uh, it just starts to smell amazing right now. And there we go. Some smoke starts to come off, starts to bubble and stuff. Well, oh, thought that.
was hot, but it wasn't. Okay, and now you've got your... I hope it comes through on the camera. But just a beautiful fragrance. The best way I can describe the frankincense is heady and nourishing and uh, really pleasing. And the myrrh, it's like your nose is having dessert. You know, that I was doing the dishes and I was thinking, that smell is so rewarding. It's hitting some receptors in the in the brain. And I don't know how to describe it. It's uh it's sweet and it's it's like your nose is eating dessert. So really neat. Now that one's not maybe as hot as it could be. But there you go. Frankincense and myrrh. The gifts to baby Jesus. And why? Why are these so revered? That's a good question. Because they just because they smell good? Well, lots of things smell good. Well, you know, like thieves oil and other essential oils that fight germs and bacteria, these have the same types of properties. And also the Egyptians and whatnot would even embalm their dead with frankincense and things. It helped in the curing process and happens to smell really nice. But it being the the, the pitch of a tree, see these didn't go, that wasn't hot enough. Um, it's got all that vital essence and stuff in the tree and with the saps and that's good. But uh, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that all of the good medicine is from things that are more than a year old. So most of what we eat is an annual. You know, our chicken, our fish, our vegetables, pretty much everything is an annual. And if you want to eat your medicine, which I strongly believe, and I'm not the first one to come up with that, that's for sure. That used to be what, you know, doctors believed. Instead of just eating denatured food and then running out and getting some vitamins, um, you just should eat your medicine. Well, the medicine is in things that are older than a year. So the resins of trees, okay, is a great example. Um, another example would be, of course, mushrooms. Wild mushrooms are the fruit of an underground organism. They can be up to eons old. So it's like eating the apple of an apple tree, but in this case, of course, you can't see the apple tree. It's under the ground, connected to the trees, connecting all the trees together. That's called mycelium. And it's getting the saps. It's getting the saps, the carbohydrates, the sugars, the essences of those old trees also. That's what's in your mushroom. That's why they're so healthy for you. Um, so if you're going to include eating medicine, think about older things. Think about, okay, nuts. They're good for you. They're nourishing. They're the seed. Again, they're the fruit of a, of a tree that's old that's been uh, living with the soil for, for a long time. Fruits are good for you, uh, same thing. Uh, mushrooms, the resins, you know, I'm sure the list goes on and on. But I think that's the easiest way to explain eating your medicine. I don't often do videos, I don't know if I've ever done a video in my house, mostly it's outside in the bush. Um, so this is a, uh, an interesting change. Let's light this up again.
Well, it's worth the trouble. That's what I'll tell you. For this fragrance, hard to imagine, but uh, it is. And there you go. So there's that nice smoke coming off now. If it wasn't the longest YouTube video ever before, I guess it is now. Now, if you do this, if you do this, you'll understand why. Why the trouble? 